said, your boarding pass. Mobile phone, or a freaking fly card ready and scan it yourself as you pass through the gate. It's managed to wear a face mask during boarding for the duration of the flight. think about teaching and about the fact that I guess we're all part of this big story and I guess that's one of the strategies that um, we use at our school. So today I'm going to give you a little bit of a story and have a think about where I fit into that and where many of you also fit into that. So we know that the story began in 1971 in a boardroom in Brisbane and there were only two women in that boardroom. One was obviously the most smartest there because she was a professor and the other one was a sister. At this time, there were only 33,000 people living in Cairns. There was a hippie colony being established in Karanda, and incidentally, the um, Chamber of Commerce had two terrible concerns for Cairns. One was street litter, and one was the influence of drugs from the hippie community being established in Karanda. At the same time, most women who got married had to quit teaching and only a third of them were allowed to get their jobs back because priorities were given to men. So it was a pretty different time. And the stories that we told as teachers are also very different. <coughs> However, we are a profession that is full of stories and storytellers. There are many of you who are here today who would remember teaching in 1971, just like my dad, who went off to work every day wearing his very attractive long socks with his elastic garters that we used to flick around the house. Um, who used to hold his clipboard, but he could also expertly manage groups of up to 60 children. There are many of you here today who have started to build the stories entwined in our shared professional standards. And you have embraced social changes, such as welcoming students with disabilities officially from 1984, acknowledging the full and equitable participation of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander teachers plus students, and of course, creating safe spaces, cultural spaces for children who have fled war as refugees and conflict. There are also those of us here today who are still weaving those stories and actively creating and building in this dynamic world of a pandemic, adapting to technological advances. And like me, many of you in this room will still be laughing at the faces of the young ones when we talk about the days without non-contact time, without PowerPoint, and when we only had three terms, so we didn't even get an Easter holiday. Like today's world, there is no doubt that the Queensland College of Teachers is also much bigger and much more diverse, reflecting the stories of us as teachers and the way we continue to create and build these. I believe that connection and teamwork are the key, and they have always been the key. And on this 50th anniversary, I know we could walk into 50 schools across Cairns, see 50 teachers in 50 classrooms, connecting with kids 50 different ways, and all doing amazing things. Each teacher has their own talents and strengths, which make them all incredible. But each teacher also knows that we are only as good as the teacher next door to us. We need the backup. We rely on a team to build us and assist us to create the stories which ultimately build the future of a community, of a nation and a world. The Queensland College of Teachers has our back and they are our team. They ensure consistency and high quality teacher education programs and uphold the excellence of our profession. It's the only team we have across all sectors, government, independent and Catholic. Standards mean we have confidence in the teacher next door to us. And it doesn't matter if they're a graduate or a highly accomplished teacher, we know that the processes we have ensure quality. It's for us, it's for the wider community, but most importantly, it's for Queensland families those families who trust us to deliver and build the stories of their future for their kids. As we expect more and more from our teaching staff, as their roles become even more complex, as we add further elements of counsellor, 
advisor, protector, supporter and advocate, as well as their day job of teaching students the curriculum, it's reassuring to all school leaders that we have a respected statutory body that works to uphold the governance standards of the teaching profession. Recruiting and keeping quality staff is a challenge for those of us in the regions. And it would be even harder if we didn't have the QCT to regulate certain standards and expectations. Now, I have had one or two disagreements with the QCT over the years regarding permission to teach and international applicants. And whilst this may be viewed as a hurdle put in place specifically to make my life harder, deep down and upon more rational reflection, I know that the work they do is in the best interests of our profession and the health, safety and success of our schools. Whilst those down south can sometimes be a little dismissive of Queenslanders, particularly those of us in the far north, I do note that Queensland was the first state in Australia to have teacher, a teacher registration authority and to mandate teacher registration for both government and non-government schools. I also note about 20 years ago that when I moved from Victoria to Queensland, that my teacher credentials were recognised immediately. But if I had happened to come from New South Wales, they were not. This was my first real understanding of state of origin. <laughs> I am a past member of the ISQ Education Committee and I remember in July last year Deanne spoke with us and it was obvious that the QCT listens and responds, not always in the way we want, but I always felt that they positioned themselves as fellow travellers rather than authoritarian regulators. And as education becomes more contested, I'm confident in the future the QCT will continue to adjust and adapt. As litigation against schools and staff becomes more prevalent, their role will become even more important. The vast majority of the teachers I have known teach simply for the betterment of the students in their care. That's why they do what they do. And in this day and age, we need a strong body that ensures that teachers have the knowledge, training and tools to thrive and can step in and provide and the experience and guidance when things go pear-shaped, as occasionally they do. Now, as an ex-head of mathematics, I've noticed the following trend that I think it is worth monitoring. Originally named the Board of Teacher Education when established in 1971. The key number here is 18 years later, the name was changed to the Board of Teacher Registration. The next key number here is 17 years later, the name was changed to the Queensland College of Teachers. Using a linear progressive analysis, the next interval change is due in 16 years after 2006, which happens to be 2022. What will their next name be? I'd like to make specific mention to congratulate and thank all of our teachers, past and present who remain so committed to our continuous improvement, especially those teachers who are here today. As a career, it can have its challenges, but as we all know, it can also be incredibly uplifting and incredibly fulfilling as we guide our charges on their learning journey, sharing the ups and downs on the way. Happy birthday and thank you to the Queensland College of Teachers. 41 years ago, I joined the teaching profession, first as a teacher in the government system, then the independent, and for the last 27 years in Catholic education. I must admit that when I left school, I was not sure what I wanted to do, but the words of my parents rang in my ears. Be a teacher, be a nurse, or work in the bank and you'll always have a job. 
not great criteria for uh, selection of your career. I thankfully chose teaching and 41 years later, there is nothing else I would want to do in life. While it's been a challenging journey, at no time have I regretted my decision. There is no greater calling than to walk with students in our care and help them reach the potential, achieve their dreams and be educated citizens of our society. When I reflect on teaching all those years ago, which just seemed like yesterday, by the way, there was less to teach, life was simpler, but teaching was a very private and isolated profession. It was my school, my classroom, and teachers sel seldom collaborated in a systematic way. In that time, what it meant to be a good teacher was that the children did as they were told. The classroom was quiet. That was a very important one. The students passed their tests. And in many cases, if they failed, it was their fault. There is no surprise in those 41 years that teaching profession and what is required of us has changed drastically. And over the years, professional development, collaboration and school-wide approaches have become not only the norm, but essential. Meaningful networking between schools and systems is what I view as our next challenge and is crucial in ensuring we provide the best possible education in every school for every child. Also, over those years, we've had a greater articulation of what it means to be a good teacher. And the Queensland College of Teachers has been an integral part of what I call the greater sophistication of the teaching profession. We now know more than ever what it, me what it means to not only be a good teacher, but also what does it mean to be a highly accomplished teacher and a lead teacher. For 50 years, the Queensland College of Teachers, and its previous name, has worked with teachers and the broader education community to ensure they provide support and high expectations for what I call one of the noblest professions of them all. Queensland College of Teachers has lived up to its aims and, in its own words, promoted a sense of professional belonging contributed to child safety, provided a doorway to the profession, enabled collaboration, influenced leadership of the teaching profession and promoted confidence in our community, in, the te in our teachers, as well as contributing to respect and promotion of the education profession. So on behalf of all educators, I share my gratitude to all who have been involved in the Queensland College of Teachers for the last 50 years. Thank you, Deanne, and your team for being here today. And thank you to you all for joining us here today as well. And welcome, Deanne and your team, to Cairns and Far North Queensland, which is the real jewel of the North.